Peter Ilyich Tchaikovsky, a Russian composer born in 1840, was a part of the Romantic period of classical music composers. One of Tchaikovsky's most well-known pieces has some explosive instrumentation. That's right, I'm talking about the 1812 Overture, which calls for cannons. No, not that cannon. These cannons. So what could possibly compel Tchaikovsky to compose an overture that includes military artillery? Well, the military. Let's rewind a bit. In the summer of 1812, Napoleon and an estimated 680,000 French soldiers invaded Russia. After weeks of fighting, the French army attacks the retreating Russian army at Borodino, about 120 kilometers west of Moscow. Borodino is one of the largest and bloodiest battles of the Napoleonic Wars, with 250,000 soldiers on the battlefield and 70,000 casualties. It ends up being another victory for Napoleon, and one week later, his army is marching into Moscow, ready to claim victory from the Russians. The Russian army had no intentions of surrendering to Napoleon at Moscow. Instead, to deny the French army resources and shelter for the coming winter, the retreating Russian army sets fire to the city. Most of Moscow's 270,000 inhabitants had evacuated the city a month before, knowing that Napoleon's army was on its way. Based on this survey from the time, an estimated 75% of the city is destroyed or damaged by the fires, leaving Napoleon's army cold and alone and no closer to victory. With supplies dwindling and winter setting in, Napoleon retreats from Russia, and by December 14, 1812, he was no longer in Russian territory, and only a fraction of his original army survives the invasion. To commemorate the victory, Tsar Alexander I commissions the construction of a cathedral to Christ the Savior, to signify our gratitude to divine providence for saving Russia from the doom that overshadowed her. Fast forward 68 years. It is now 1880. The cathedral is nearing completion, and a mentor of Tchaikovsky suggests he write a festival piece to be played at the opening of the cathedral, which is planned to take place in 1882, during the All-Russia Arts and Industry Exhibition. Tchaikovsky likes the idea, and starts writing the piece in October of 1880. Just six weeks later, Tchaikovsky has finished writing the overture. The overture's structure can best be described as narrative, since the music follows the events of the French invasion of Russia in 1812. The overture begins with a simple melody from an Eastern Orthodox hymn, O Lord, Save Thy People. This represents the Russian people praying for a swift conclusion to the invasion. Then, the melody from the French national anthem, La Marseillaise, can be heard, which represents the invading French army. A quick side note here about La Marseillaise. At the time of the invasion, the French national anthem was not La Marseillaise. Napoleon had replaced it with a different anthem. It was not until 1879 that La Marseillaise was officially reinstated as the French national anthem. However, since audiences would be more familiar with La Marseillaise, Tchaikovsky decided to use it to represent Napoleon's army, even though it was not Napoleon's official anthem. The melody of La Marseillaise is heard competing against other Russian folk melodies. This represents the two armies fighting in battle as the French army gets closer and closer to Moscow. Then, we hear five cannon shots, which represent the Battle of Borodino. At this point, the melody of La Marseillaise is at its most prominent and seems to be winning. The next element we hear is a long descending run. And I mean, this goes on for quite some time. This descending figure represents the French army's retreat out of Moscow and Russia. At the end of this long run, the melody from the hymn we heard at the very beginning of the piece returns. This can be interpreted as prayers being answered or divine intervention. This time, the melody is not apprehensive, it is triumphant, with church bells pealing and chimes ringing in celebration. For the grand finale, we hear 11 more cannon shots and the melody of God Save the Tsar. With the completed score in hand, Tchaikovsky was ready for the All-Russia Arts and Industry Exhibition in 1882. The event was going to mark the 70th anniversary of the victory over the French, 
Even the current Tsar Alexander II was to be in attendance. Organizers planned to set up a raised stage in front of the cathedral for the orchestra. They planned to have a brass band perform with the orchestra. And all the church bells in all of Moscow were to play the celebratory pealing near the end of the overture. And of course, the cannons would be there. Unfortunately, history was not on Tchaikovsky's side. In March of 1881, Tsar Alexander II was assassinated, and planning for the exhibition was significantly scaled back. The overture did premiere at the exhibition in Moscow on August 20th, 1882, but it was not conducted by Tchaikovsky. There was no stage next to the finished cathedral as planned. It was performed in a tent next to the still unfinished cathedral. There was no brass band. There were no cannons. However, Tchaikovsky did conduct the overture in 1891 at the dedication of Carnegie Hall in New York City. But Tchaikovsky was not a big fan of the piece. He wrote that the overture was very loud and noisy, and completely without artistic merit, obviously written without warmth or love. The 1812 overture ended up being one of his most popular works and continues to be performed all around the world. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe. You can also click the link to Patreon to find out how you can get some awesome perks for supporting Odd Quartet. Or click on one of the links below to watch another video.